Welcome to Love, Money, and the Law, where you'll find conversations about everything relationships, marriage, and divorce. I'm your host, Cindy Hyde, and my goal is to bring you new insights and points of view through legal, psychological, financial, and spiritual perspectives. Be sure to check out lovemoneylaw.com for live seminars, free videos, and products related to many of the topics we'll discuss. I'm glad you're here. Let's consider a few of the benefits and reasons for creating a cohabitation agreement if you're going to live together and have no intention of getting married. I also want to emphasize that nothing here is legal advice. The purpose of this information is to bring awareness to issues that are a part of these contracts. If you decide this is something you want to do because you are committed to each other for the long term, then you and your partner will each need to contact a family law attorney in your state to see how the issues apply to your personal circumstances. Your contract is a reflection of your partnership and sets out the expectations for managing your life together. These expectations include your financial obligations as a couple, such as how to pay the household expenses during the relationship. It will also include scenarios for purchasing property together, commingling funds, and guidelines for caring for children and pets. For example, if one of you has given up a career to take care of the home or children, then perhaps you can set aside an annual amount for that stay-at-home partner in exchange for his or her contribution. That clarification will allow the stay-at-home person to save for retirement since he or she does not otherwise have an income. Most importantly, in the event your relationship is limited, there are terms for the end. In the example I just mentioned, without an agreement, if one person has stayed at home to raise children and the couple isn't married, then the agreement serves to outline the expectations and the legal authority to protect each person against a financial loss or windfall. Another big reason for drafting a contract concerns a typical estate planning exercise. What happens to you or your partner if one of you suddenly dies? A surviving partner has no rights of inheritance without the benefit of marriage. And it's a good example of the extent of complexity that might be in a situation in which there's no ability to fall back on the family codes of your state. In addition, one partner passing away is another reason why it's critical to draft an agreement with the help of a family law attorney in your state. Your lawyer will also make sure that your contract is compatible with your will and estate plan. There are many other good reasons for having a cohabitation agreement, but briefly, here are some additional benefits you get. Secure the intention for a long-term relationship by outlining your desires for the relationship. Protect your assets and your separate property. Avoid a common law marriage in states that recognize informal marriages. Provide life insurance for your partner where the insurance company recognizes a domestic partner as an insurable interest. Avoid losing some benefits for some types of government or private programs, or keep other types of benefits separate from your partner if you were to get married. Outline some conditional child support obligations, although these clauses have much less clout in family court where the best interest of a child will always trump simple contract. In the case of children's issues, cohabitation agreements have comparatively limited power when it comes to parenting and child custody. Next, some advantages and disadvantages to cohabitation agreements. These issues are often different sides of the same coin, but the bottom line is that without a contract for a long-term relationship, there are few statutory protections for a spousal equivalent. I'm going to leave you with some questions to ask yourself before drafting your agreement. Write your answers out and reflect on what the implications are for you and your loved ones. Thinking through these issues will help you strengthen a healthy lifestyle or realize that an unhealthy one may be on your horizon in time for you to do something about it. 
The following list includes a few areas where your legal rights are not available as a spousal equivalent, absent an agreement otherwise. Here we go. How long do you anticipate your agreement to last? Until it's revoked? Or will it eventually expire and why? Have you considered any guidelines for how to pay your debts and living expenses? Who will contribute? How? And when? Have you considered whether or not you'd want to be reimbursed for any contributions you may make to each other's investment funds, retirement funds, property equity, or maintenance on the separate property of your partner? Do you anticipate that financial support payments will be given or received during your relationship? If so, how much? How will you determine the amount? Who will make health and medical decisions should one of you become incapacitated? Who will make final medical decisions in the event of an emergency? How do you anticipate that your real property will be distributed should you end your relationship if it was purchased together or if it wasn't? Have you considered the payment of rehabilitative support in the event your relationship ends? How will you value the person staying at home to care for the family? If one of you were to die, who is appointed as conservator or executor of your estate? Have you completed a comprehensive estate plan with an attorney whose practice focuses on trust, wills, and estates? Have you executed any powers of attorney? If so, what do they include? I also hope you found this information helpful. For more topics about family law issues and everything marriage and divorce, go to lovemoneylaw.com. I'm Cindy Hyde. Thanks for listening. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Love, Money, and the Law. Be sure to subscribe to receive a note about the next topic. When you subscribe, it helps support this effort to bring you independent insights into topics that matter in your family and beyond.